Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this third Saturday of Easter time, to a time of prayer, reflection, and adoration. Today, the Church gives honor and celebrates the memorial of Saint Athanasius. Before we begin the time of prayer, reflection, and adoration, let us look at the life of Saint Athanasius. St. Athanasius was born in either 296 or 298. He was also known as Athanasius the Great and Athanasius the Confessor. He was bishop and doctor of the church. He's called the father of orthodoxy, the pillar of the church and champion of Christ's divinity. Athanasius became one of the most dedicated opponents of heresy of Arianism. Much of his life was a testimony to the divinity of Jesus Christ and of dedicated service to the Church. Born in Alexandria, Egypt, to a prominent Christian family, Athanasius received a classical education and became secretary to Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, whom he was much influenced by in fighting the Arianism movement. Athanasius befriended many monks and hermits of the desert, including St. Anthony, whom he later wrote a biography on which achieved astonishing popularity and contributed greatly to the establishment of monastic life throughout the Western Christian world. Athanasius wrote his first work, a theological thesis on the Incarnation, which is still quoted extensively in Christian theological studies and spiritual literature. His many dogmatic and historical writings are almost all polemic directed against every aspect of Arianism. Athanasius, as Alexander's secretary, was present during the Great Church debate. He may have even composed the letter that announced Arius's condemnation. Athanasius stood alongside Alexander during the famous Council of Nicaea to determine the matters of dogma. Alexander died and Athanasius succeeded him after being unanimously elected. He was consecrated as the new Bishop of Alexander in 328 and continued the fight against Arianism. Over the course of his life, Athanasius was banished five times and spent 17 years of his life in exile for the defense of the doctrine of Christ's divinity. It was only during one period of his life, the last years of his life, that he enjoyed 10 years of relative peace, reading, writing and promoting Christian life along the lines of the monastic ideal to which he was deeply devoted. He is the patron saint of theologians and faithful Orthodox and Roman Catholic Christians and hailed to this day as a great defender of the faith. Let us begin as we bless ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who raised up the Bishop Saint Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your Son's divinity, Mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teachings and his protection, 
you may never cease to grow in the knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up living in the fear of the Lord and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Peter visited one place after another and eventually came to the saints living down in Lydda. There he found a man called Aeneas, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Peter said to Aeneas, Jesus Christ cures you. Get up and fold up your sleeping mat. Aeneas got up immediately. Everybody who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they were all converted to the Lord. At Jaffa, there was a woman, a disciple called Tabitha, or Dorcas in Greek, who never tired of doing good or giving in charity. But the time came when she got ill and died, and they washed her and laid her out in a room upstairs. Lider is not far from Jaffa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent two men with an urgent message for him. Come and visit us as soon as possible. Peter went back with them straight away. And on his arrival, they took him to the upstairs room, where all the widows stood round him in tears, showing him tunics and other clothes Dokas had made when she was with them. Peter sent them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to the dead woman and said, Tabitha, stand up. She opened her eyes, looked at Peter and sat up. Peter helped her to her feet. Then he called in the saints and widows and showed them she was alive. The whole of Jaffa heard about it and many believed in the Lord. The Word of the Lord The Responsorial Psalm How can I repay the Lord for His goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for His goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. O oh, precious, in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. The Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia! Your words are Spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, 
This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, Many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe, we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, following yesterday's Gospel, where Jesus tells the Jews, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life in you. Jesus becomes aware that some of his disciples are finding his teachings really difficult to accept and follow and that they have begun to argue and complain. In fact, some turn away and no longer want to follow him. We often get upset, frustrated and disappointed when we fail to understand by human logic or our capabilities. Following Christ is not always going to be easy path. We might be tempted to turn away when things feel too difficult. This is because we depend on our own strength and capabilities. As weak as we are, how can we keep going? Jesus makes a powerful statement giving us guidance and reminds us in today's gospel. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus, the word of life, is the one who gives us life. As in the first chapter of the gospel of John, Verses 1 to 5, it begins with, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is revealing himself that he is God, and only his Spirit can give us life. Jesus even asked the apostles if they also wanted to walk away, giving them a free choice to choose. Just like the disciples and apostles, Jesus is asking you and I today, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Do you believe and trust Jesus, that he is the Son of God, the bread of life given to us for our redemption? Jesus is inviting us to be in tune with the Spirit to be able to see beyond. We cannot see beyond 
unless we are in tune with the Spirit and drawn by the Father, as Jesus says. This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. We cannot come to believe in Jesus unless we are allowed by the Father who reveals Jesus to us. Simon Peter, in tune with the Spirit's revelation, answered on behalf of all the apostles with a profession of faith. Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life. And we believe, we know that you are the Holy One of God. My dear brothers and sisters, the Eucharist is a meal to which Jesus invites us personally. It leaves us to accept Jesus' invitation or reject it. Just like the disciples in today's gospel were free to choose. Do we accept Jesus' invitation? If we do, why? Many of us have been cradle Catholics. Some of us have been baptized as adults. And for some others have been received into the church. We have all shared in the Eucharist. If we are honest, we must admit that this sharing of the Eucharist has not brought us as close to each other and to Jesus as we should be. Why is this so? What is preventing us? Are we having the right disposition of spirit? Perhaps it's because we take Jesus for granted knowing in our heads that Jesus is God, but no personal encounter with Him. Hence, no change in our life in accepting His way of life. Or we may sometimes tend to view the Eucharist only as a time of receiving, receiving a meal. We tend to forget that the Eucharist is also a sacrifice, a time of giving and forgiving, a time to change, to repent and to reconcile. How giving and forgiving are we in living out our Christian calling? By our baptism, we are called to live our faith, walking with Jesus in the sunlight of Easter morning, only if we first accompany him through the shadows of Good Friday afternoon by dying to our old self of sin and living life in Christ. Perhaps we could pray today using those words of Peter, you have the message of eternal life. And with faith and zeal, like St. Athanasius, whose feast we celebrate today, who spent much of his life testifying to the truth of the divinity of Jesus Christ. Let us then reflect on how to remain focused on that truth, even when it seems difficult to, or when we feel alone or discouraged. Let us now pray together. Loving Lord, we are weak and at times lack faith because we do not understand or see you working in our lives or when it is so difficult to carry on, when we face crises in, in our lives. Forgive us for rejecting your invitation of love and for rejecting you by not having faith. Bless us with the gift of faith and truly believe that you have the message of eternal life. Help us always to trust in your love and follow you faithfully, depending on you and not in ourselves. 
May we always support and encourage others who may also be finding things more difficult than we know. God bless and loves you. Amen. Let us pause for a time of personal reflection and adoration. I invite you to press the pause button to spend as much time as you want to adore the true bread of life, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with Saint Athanasius, may through this sacrament ever give us life and protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia.